a game that is available for all ages. They could be a hero whose name will forever remember in history books, a commander with hundreds of soldiers under his command or even the richest man in the world. You could even be the king. The miraculous VR game is complete with a fantasy world and perfect realism for players to enjoy. Within this world, they do anything and be anything. This is the new world. On a bright afternoon, a commercial for a virtual game, the new world, is shown on an outdoor LED screen. They can make their dream come true in this game. A man with a muscular body stands in front of the screen, and the moment he saw the commercial, he realized that by entering the new world, he could make his dream come true. Behind this muscular physique, he loves nothing more than to become a florist instead. He is our story protagonist named Jehu, a gentle giant man who wants to own a flower shop but his overbearing father wants him to be a professional MMA fighter. On that particular day he visits his father's fitness center. While running on a treadmill with his friend Wansik, he mentions his desire to open a flower shop. Wansik was shocked and uttered loudly when he heard it. Jiho warned him to keep quiet because he was afraid that his father would hear them. His father is a macho gym owner who despises flowers. If Jiho says the word florist in front of his father, he may receive hurtful words and his father will almost certainly start foaming at the mouth. Wansik mocks his dream because of his intimidating face which may scare people and he even suggests that Jiho should be an MMA fighter like what his father trained him to be. Because of Jiho's appearance, most of their customers won't be able to look him in the eyes. When Jiho was in high school five years ago, he was also the one who looked at his father's fitness gym. Two men barged into the gym one day and smashed the door. They are enraged because Worm Gym operates in their neighborhood without their permission. When they entered, they noticed Jiho sitting in the lobby, a back, wearing earphones and listening to music. These men yell at Jiho and demand that he pays them a protection fee, but Jiho isn't hearing them, so a fat man grabs his arm and tells him to take off his earphones. Jiho stands, and the men are taken aback because they did not expect Jiho to be such a tall, muscular man. He greets them with an angry expression, but the truth is that he is sorry for not listening to the customer. We're actually here to register, the customer said. They lied because they were afraid of Jiho's body. Jiho immediately informed them of the amount to be paid. And the customer immediately paid him the sum of 60,000 won for two people. Going back to the present day, Wansik reminded Jiho that every plant he touches also dies and he's also allergic to flowers so he concludes that being a florist is not meant for Jiho. To make it possible for Jiho, he will do it in a virtual game, The New World. People say that this game is limitless and Jiho is probably the first person who wants to open a flower shop in a game. Still, he doesn't care about it because, for him, this game is for those people who wanted to make their dreams possible so that even those people who cannot do fishing in real life can do it in the new world. Lying in a capsule all day is going to cause muscle loss so Wansik wondered how Jiho going to play it when his dad will flip out once he will be caught according to Jiho. If it will happen, he will move out and get his own place. Jiho doesn't have the capsule yet and his plan is to play in the capsule room in the meantime. Wansik started playing New World recently and since Jiho is very determined to play he invited Jiho to play together in the capsule room. After hearing him, Jiho feels thrilled and agreed to Wansik without any hesitation. Meanwhile, they arrive at the capsule room. Jiho feels anxious and keeps turning around since this is his first time. Wansik told him to select Kruma as a starting area but Jiho has an idea that this area is desert. I told you, I'm starting a flower shop so why are you telling me to spawn in a desert? Jiho answered. Wansik was annoyed and educated him that Kruma is the easiest area for a newbie to start leveling up and starting his own flower shop. Wansik thinks that Jiho is hard-headed so he warned Jiho not to bother playing the game if he will choose Lux Forest in his early game. Jiho looks confused and Wansik concludes that Jiho already chose the Lux Forest. According to Wansik, this area is famously known as a graveyard for new players and the players can't change their starting area once they will choose the Lux Forest. Players can't also have a secondary character or reset their existing character. Newbies might end up trapped here forever and unable to do any of their starting quests because of the angry elves that live in this area. Other than that, players might end up paying some high-level ranker for a few thousand dollars to get them out in the Lux Forest. And that's the reason why Wansik doesn't want Jiho to select this Lux Forest and his starting area. Jiho does not listen to him and continues to enter the capsule, despite the fact that it is too small for him. I think you need a bigger capsule, Jiho, Wansik said. While Jiho was about to enter the game, Wansik reminded him not to choose the Lux Forest and informed him that they should meet in the starting hall in Kruma and gave him his ID. In just a second, Jiho finally entered the new world and he discovered that character customization is locked but he can put in an ID that he wants. After he put in his ID, there's a light emerged and a notification welcomed him to the game. His ID name is Alcia and as Wansik expected, Jiho selects Lux Forest, the paradise of the elves. He immediately whispers to Wansik to inform him that he already logged into the game. 
Wan Six's ID name is Muslim, and he was shocked upon knowing that Jiho's ID name is Alsia, which is no match to his terrifying demeanor. Wan Six asked Jiho's location as he doesn't see Jiho in the Kruma starting hall, but Jiho can't answer him, so he angrily asked if he was really in the Lux Forest. I think I'm lagging. Jiho answered, but Wan Six doesn't believe him because the New World doesn't have any issues. Wan Six was annoyed and keeps nagging Jiho, and since he will not stop, Jiho decided to block him in the game. Upon seeing the surroundings, the place is full of flowers and he believes that Lux Forest is the right choice for him. He was so excited and even in this world, he warmed up his body before he start. While he was hopping, someone saw him and invited him to join their association named the Global Lux Association. The man was about to reach Jiho's arm from behind but Jiho turned his head and he thought that this man is NPC so he answered that he has been waiting for him to come. Jiho stood and said, then, let's begin, upon hearing it. The man feels scared and was confused about what Jiho meant to say. The man suddenly run and answered that he doesn't want to do PvP or player versus player. Jiho wondered why he run and also questioned himself about what is the Global Luxy Association. Jiho forgets about it right away after he saw a lot of flowers in his surrounding and he feels so much happiness thinking that he can finally have his own flower shop. He then seizes the opportunity to smell the flowers in the forest as he doesn't have an allergic reaction in this world. He holds some flowers, doesn't even feel that it was just a fantasy, and even thinks this world is heaven. Suddenly, there is a notification saying that he has obtained flower inspect skills and he can now learn the name of the plants he interacts with. His face looks disappointed but this is really his extremely satisfied expression and he was touched upon realizing that this skill was really made for him. After a while, he leveled up to level 5 with his flower inspect skills and also received a lot of notification. He obtained the title of the Innocent Observer which made his speed increase wherever there are flowers. He also obtained the title Do You Like Flowers, which increased his affinity with flowers. Aside from that, he also obtained the title of Novice Botanist and unlocked Alcia's plant journal. Information about the plant he studied will be recorded in the plant catalog. He trembles out of excitement and yells in happiness because this is all he really wanted that he cannot even do in real life. Around the same time, another player named May joined the game and arrived in Lux Forest. Other players also told her not to start in this area but she couldn't resist. She also heard that there are elves who live here and know that things are tough here but she thinks that it will be worth it if she can be friends with elves. She started to move and look around but she heard a voice and thought that it was an elf. When she checked it she saw Jiho yelling and she concludes that Jiho is a monster. Five minutes later, on the New World Game Forum, they posted in the forum informing everyone that there is a scary monster in Lux Forest. Jiho doesn't know her existence and he continues enjoying the flowers in the forest. Since he was curious about the encyclopedia he immediately pull it out onto the screen. After checking, he then realized how the information is being recorded. Filling it up will give him satisfaction so he decided to walk around and look for more flowers in the forest. After a while, he obtained a level 1 Gypsophila elegance and level 1 white clover flower. Suddenly, a spore is floating and he takes a step in the direction of where it is coming from out of curiosity. When he found it, he was amazed by the view that he witnessed the beautiful Ethel's flower garden and he feels weird upon seeing a flower bud. Every other flower has bloomed aside from this one. He leans and observes the flower and it brings back his memory of when he was in middle school. He also saw a pink flower that doesn't bloom fully and even with his allergic reaction attacked he doesn't care and promised that he will make it bloom. Starting that day, he watered the flower, played classical music, and even cheer it to bloom. One day, the flower started to bloom and he was teary-eyed when he saw it and realized that the flower successfully made it. Unexpectedly, someone stomps on it and approaches him about the rumor in their school saying that he's the one who plants a poisonous flower in the garden. The man really believes that this rumor about Jiho is true just because of Jiho's appearance which made Jiho to be pissed off. That day, the flower cried, Jiho cried, and the bully cried too. He failed back then but this time, he's very sure that he will be going to succeed and help this flower bloom. Jiho received a notification informing him that he discovered the Efelt's flower that never blooms. He then wondered why it will never bloom even though it still looks like the other Efelt's flower. This may be eternally unblooming but Jiho is also eternally stubborn which he learned from his father. Though he had better keep it a secret from his father that he's being stubborn about the flower. Jiho started observing the flower. An hour later, Jiho is still observing and thinking that if it's the same Efelt's flower, it wouldn't have been logged as a separate entry in the plant journal. He then concludes that it might be an entirely different species of Efelt's flower. He cannot sit any longer as he wants more information about the unblooming flower so he rushed heads to the starting village. Three hours into the game, Jiho finally started playing like normal. He goes to the small elves shelter in Triam village. Rumors said, one of the biggest reasons Lux Forest was a difficult place to start was because of the elves that don't take kindly to humans, since this is just a game. 
Geo tried to approach the elves but the elves were alarmed upon seeing him and warned him not to enter their village. Geo feels frightened as he never realized that the elves here are so aggressive. He was about to explain but the elves thought he was a monster so they started to attack Jiho. Jiho wondered why the elves called him a monster behind his cute face and he thinks that the elves are making fun of him. The male elves tried to punch him but Jiho knew how to dodge. He also teased the elf that his weaving is flawless so there was no way for them to hit him. He was trained by his father who reminded him every day that he should be the best MMA player in the whole world that's why now he has weaving skills that he applied while the elf is trying to punch him. A player won't be able to fight very well in the game regardless of their fighting levels in the new world if they don't have the aptitude for it in real life. That means, no matter how high level these elves are, Geo should be able to fight back. At this time, Geo was about to show the elves a real punch. He swing his fist toward the elf but the system notified him that he cannot able to damage this foe because they have different level. After the punch that Geo strike, the elves realize that he fights well and even the female elf was surprised because they never saw any strong monsters in their forest. Jiho was annoyed after he heard the elves call him a monster once again. The moment he speak, the elves man thought that he might be a demon. He explained that he's an immortalian. It's a term elves used to refer to players, as the player immortal to elves when they come back from the dead as if they never died in the first place. The elves don't believe him right away, and they even asked for proof from Jiho but they suddenly smell something on Jiho's body. They smell the Ephelt's flower to Jiho and Jiho suddenly saw information that pops up on his screen and because of that, the elves realized that he really is a true immortalian. He explained to them that he doesn't want to fight. He only came just to know some information about the Ephelt's flower. The elves wondered why he wanted to learn about the Ephelt's flower and he was shy saying that he was trying to grow one. The elves did not believe him and they whispered to each other that this man in front of them is just trying to trick them. Since they don't believe Jiho, he clarified to them that he is referring to the Ephelt's flower that never blooms. Both of the elves were startled upon hearing it and become speechless which made Jiho wonder what was wrong with them. Unexpectedly, he received a notification informing him that he survived a battle with a foe that is much stronger than him, and because of that, his reputation has increased. Meanwhile, May entered the game again and checked some messages in the forum. She read different reasons to not select Lux Forest and she then remembered Geo whom she thought was a monster. She was so excited to finally be in Train Village and talk to some elves but didn't realize that the tutorial quest would be hard. 20 minutes ago, May received a quest that she needs to greet 10 elves and she feels excited about the thought that it's going to be easy for her not until she saw a sexy black-haired elf. She greeted him right away but it doesn't work. The elves man ignored him and she just concludes that the elves man must be in a bad mood. She tried again and saw several elves. May approached the elves but the elves feel uncomfortable around her. And now, her favorability has reached its bottom and she might get attacked. She didn't even get a chance even once. The man from the Global Lux Association suddenly appeared and invited her to join his association but May doesn't notice him because she heard a sound of a flute. When they turned around, they were shocked upon seeing the man that they both misunderstood and now together with some elves. While Jiho is walking with the elves, he doesn't have any idea why the elves drag him into the village as soon as he mentioned the Efelt's flower that never blooms. The elves lead the way and Jiho followed them until they arrive at the place of Triam's elder. He feels frightened after knowing that he needs to face their elder and he also feels like he's getting captured now. The elven elder of the Triam village is named Eldar and the male elf informed her that Geo knows about the Ephelt's flower that never blooms. She was shocked upon hearing it and Geo suddenly said that he wanted to explain it by himself. He thought that he will be attacked by these elves that's why he wanted to convince Eldar. Geo fervently professed his love for flowers and told the elves about his dream of opening a flower shop. He opened up his heart and soul to them like never before and they slowly mesmerized by his speech. After explaining to them, he successfully made the elves move their heart because of his deep and genuine love for the flower. The elves also learned from him a valuable lesson to never judge a book by its cover. Because of his perseverance, the elves finally accepted him and he heard several positive comments from them. His heart is as sweet and beautiful as a flower, unlike his face. One elf man stated, Eldar approached him and she was also amazed by Jiho. She introduced herself properly and Jiho did the same. My name is Elsia. He stated, Eldar liked his ID name and she even said that his name is beautiful as his heart. She understands now why Jiho knows about the Efelt's flower that never blooms and he unexpectedly received a notification informing him that the job change quest is about to start. The Efelt's flower that never blooms is closely connected to a certain elven legend. Eldar can help him find more information about this flower which may help to make it bloom. Once he will successfully completes the quest, he will be rewarded with a change of job to Spirit Gardener. According to Eldar, the first Spirit Gardener is named Teenlight, who is beloved by all elves and the Lux Forest would not exist if it weren't for him. In the beginning, this place was a wasteland, but he cultivated into a forest. He helped wandering elves here to settle down. 
He had sadly returned to Mother Nature 200 years ago. Unlike elves, Team Light is a human, but this place Lux Forest was his last rest stop. However, he left his will here, in the first scene planted in the desolate land, the Efelt's flower that never blooms. Once Geo can pass the test that Teen Light prepared, he will be the new spirit gardener who will also be the hope of all the wandering elves on this continent. Eldar bows to Jiho and begs for help. Jiho is puzzled and can't utter anything but suddenly answered, Uh, can I open a flower shop if I became a spirit gardener? Eldar was shocked upon hearing it as she didn't expect that a muscular man would love to become a florist. Geo thought that his dream might not be possible here because Eldar didn't give an answer so he apologized and said that he only came here to open a flower shop. Eldar laughed and said that it is possible for him to have a shop. She also remembered Teen Light, since Geo said, was also Teen Light always said to them before and was just too deeply in love with flowers. The spirit of Teen Light himself maybe led Geo to his legacy because he surely senses Geo's deep love for flowers. Geo feels shy since he received a compliment even though he's not sure yet if he will successfully complete the quest and become the spirit gardener. According to Eldar, they can sense Geo's genuine love for flowers from the scent of nature that hangs in the air around him. Okay then, I'll give it my best, Geo stated and accepted the job-changing quest. One company in the whole world who managed the development and service of the new world is the worldwide company that began in Korea. The developer of Crater AI. Crater is the creator and the recorder of the core of life and history of the new world. Crater is the head that controls everything in the new world. The production of the company game interface is strictly blocked. The production company never stops the system maintenance of the crater. The production company has a lot of divisions and one of their important team is in the middle of observing an important event. They unexpectedly received a notice about an SSS grade event the first time after they opened Crater which is the job change quest. They were all surprised about the Spirit Gardener quest because it's not an ordinary quest, but it is the air class. Within the new world, there are three different grades of classes, normal, rare, and unique. Every player begins at a normal grade, but their classes would be changed based on their different playstyles. This unique system has stimulated the player to rise and reach the highest class possible. However, there is a high class higher than unique that no one has achieved yet, the legendary class. It would be difficult to attain the class, but if someone were to overcome the odds, they would become a famous legend of the new world. But there's a specific grade that skips all of that long chain process. It's the successor grade of Spirit Gardener. Meanwhile, Geo goes back to the Efelt's flower that never blooms and the current progress is already 20%. He now realized that this flower was an actual bloom. Since the plant observation skill doesn't provide him with any other special information he thinks it'll be better to raise the observation process for the normal Efelt's flowers first and he might even find a hint there. His best method, for now, will be this spore. Since they bloom all over the forest like dandelions, Geo believes that they should be able to grow anywhere. He already tried this back in junior high so he's confident about this. He's observing the blossoming process of the Efelt's flower every day and he discovered that it takes two weeks for this flower to sprout and blossom. It took him longer than he thought and he noticed that planting and growing something himself seems to have pushed along the observation process much faster than just sitting and staring at it. Suddenly, Geo leveled up his plant observation skill and it has now reached level 10. He can now identify the condition of the observed plant. Upon reading the notification, Geo doesn't understand it so he decided to check the status of his observation but still, nothing changes. Another notification gave him the plant condition of the Efel's flower. It says that it feels extremely frightened due to the presence of human stalking for the past few days. It's as if he can read the emotions of the flower. Geo looks around to check if there are people around him. He then goes directly to the Efelth's flower that never blooms. He gently speaks to the flower while he was shivering and he feels like his acting is so weird. Even so, the skill told him that plants seem to have their own consciousness and emotions so he believes it's no different from humans. He talked to the Efelth's flower again and introduced himself. Even though someone might think I'm going mad if they see me talking to you, let's get along well from now on. Jiho stated, two months later at Warham Gym, Wansik makes fun of him for playing the new world just to open his own flower shop and now trying to hold a conversation with a flower for about two months. He even thinks that Jiho is going to be crazy. Jiho was so proud of himself because, after two months, the Efel's flower that never blooms no longer feared him anymore. The two months he spent there seemed to be really worth it. Wansik doesn't care about this Efel's flower. All he wanted to know is about how Geo makes the elves think of him favorably. Moreover, he doesn't think that Spirit Gardener doesn't exist since he never heard it from anyone else. Even though Geo can't explain it well to Wansik, he's very sure that it will be going pretty well. Geo didn't just talk to the flowers. The Efelt flower seemingly likes to bathe in the morning dew and songs from the reed too. He learned some new skills because of the elves but also it leveled up. After hearing it, Wansik was shocked and because of curiosity he asked about Geo's character's current level. 
Normally, after two months it would be around level 15 to 30. It's a secret, Jiho stated. Meanwhile, he entered the new world and his character is currently level 4 while his skill levels are high. His plant observation is currently level 31, the florist skill is level 23, the landscaper is level 12, and his elven reed performance is level 28. He was thinking about Wansik's reaction once he will know Geo's level is too low but the skills have leveled up a lot. At this moment, he was too excited to start his daily routine. He immediately goes to the Efelth's flower and greeted him. He also told a story about his father. Time has passed and he spent a pleasant time with the Efelth's flower. When the night comes, he said goodbye to the flower but the flower feels sad about his farewell and it wants to follow him. Suddenly, before Jiho can leave, the Efelth's flower that never bloomed began to bloom and Jiho was surprised upon seeing it. It was glowing in the dark that makes the light in the dark forest. What's confusing is that it is not a spore but a light ball and it's as if it's alive. After a long wait of waiting, he has finished the quest from the Spirit Gardener, Teen Light, and now has the right to change his class to Spirit Gardener. The system asked Jiho if he will accept the reward and as expected, he accepts it without any hesitation. It's beaming and goes inside Jiho's chest. He was shocked after he witnessed it disappear into his body. The system notified him that he already changed his class to Spirit Gardener. He also obtained Sacred Tree Seed and finally, the Spirit Gardener skill is now passed down to him. He feels excited that he already completed his quest but he wondered why he doesn't feel any different. He inherits the skills of a spirit gardener, converse with spirit, and can now talk to the spirit of life. He also inherits the rapid growth level 1 and he can increase the growth of the plant he observes by 100%. He feels thrilled after he managed to clear the quest using only his devotion and that is why he plays this game. The spirit of life who is residing in your body is laughing with you now. The system notified. He was holding his chest and concluded that the spirit of life inside him might be a fairy which whom he can talk about things with it now. A notification informing him that the spirit can talk to him but still feel a little shy. Lastly, he reached for something through the screen. It's the sacred tree seed, a myth grade that is covered with a thick shell and there might be something hidden underneath the shell. Upon observing, Geo wondered how this giant thing was categorized as a seed and he also wondered how this huge thing pop out from the little cute flower. Most importantly he was curious as to how he can use this seed. All the skills that he already had only just transferred to class skills, so not much have changed. But good thing that the spirit of life buff, his skill efficiency increased. The spirit of life is a spirit that comes from the bloomed Efels flower that never blooms. The class skill will receive an additional buff and additional points. He thought that nothing really changes until someone shouted that a new spirit gardener has been born. It's the elves that celebrate the quest completion of Jiho. Upon seeing them, he wondered why they are more excited than him. Meanwhile, within the bushes lies a group of people watching the celebration party held for the new spirit gardener by the elves. They are the Global Lux Association or GLA members. Eventually, the newbie named Mei chose to join GLA last month and she's here now wondering what quest has been completed and his colleagues have stated that they may be celebrating simply because the elves were scared by Jiho's barbaric face. Mei didn't agree with it because when she peeked at Jiho, Jiho always hung out and talked to a flower and if she will say to his colleagues, none of them will believe it. The current chairman suddenly appeared and suggested that they should investigate Jiho secretly. He wanted to pay back the humiliation Jiho gave him last time when he thought that Jiho invited him to PvP. Mei was puzzled while observing Jiho enjoying himself with the elves. She thinks that Jiho might actually be a warm person despite his looks. Jiho was enjoying celebrating with the elves and Eldar congratulates him for completing the quest. Well, I did it because I wanted to. Jiho stated which made Eldar thrilled because Jiho answered just like a true spirit gardener. Jiho opened up that he was still not quite sure what a spirit gardener really is and Eldar said that there isn't much information about them in this world. Originally, the beautiful Lysalin forest was the elves' hometown and they lived peacefully under the protection of the sacred tree, their place of worship. Jiho was alarmed after hearing it because he also obtained a sacred tree seed. According to Eldar, the elves went on a brink of extinction due to the Scorched War 300 years ago. Back then, the sacred tree sacrificed itself to save them. After the war, the Lysalin forest slowly dried up, and elves were scattered all over the world. Jiho was thinking about the said war that was brutal enough to destroy an entire forest. In the beginning, there was a good relationship between the elves and humans, but that war broke off. The humans joined hands with the evil, marched in and burned down the elves' forests, and assaulted lives. After that war, elves no longer trusted humans and became hostile to them. However, there was one human named Teen Light that was exempt from their hostility. His close friendship with spirits and his love for nature left them with a deep impression that had them all respect Teen Light. He was the last person who communicate with the sacred tree as the spirit gardener. But now, it would be you, Sir Alcia, Eldar stated. A class quest notification suddenly popped up. 
The new spirit gardener has inherited the unfulfilled promise to the sacred three that spirit gardener Teen Light couldn't protect. As a new spirit gardener, Geo needs to fulfill this. As long as the sacred tree is not revived, the elves will continue to weaken and gradually go extinct. Geo can help the elves by reviving the sacred tree. Geo gets the seed of the sacred tree and he gives it to Eldar but Eldar said that the sacred tree has left everything up to Jiho, not to the elves. This has long been decided by the sacred tree and they cannot do anything about it. Jiho stated that he doesn't know how to cultivate it but Eldar gets something and gently handed it to Jiho while saying, All of the elves in the entire continent will help you, Sir Alcia. Please take this. It's the proof of pink lover necklace, a legendary grade. It is a handeman necklace made by Eldar. As long as Jiho is wearing this, no elves shall be hostile toward him. Jiho appreciates this even though its color is pink. He removed the garland and puts on the pink lover necklace which made Eldar glad that it fits well with Jiho. Upon wearing it, Jiho feels like his skin tone matches quite well with the pink color items but feels shy about weaning his first necklace. At the Worldwide Company, New World's Observation Team, all of them didn't expect someone will complete the quest and stay in the forest for two whole months. The observation team is having a conference. They talked about the biggest event of the year that has now started since the launch of the game. Their supervisor knows that these workers' months must feel itchy to brag about the great SSS event, but he still warned them not to leak the news as their job is only to observe. Everything would be reported back to their chairman, and the chairman would be one to decide what comes next. The supervisor was actually amazed at Jiho for finding the quest they hid on the flower that no player ever noticed and overcame all the terrible possibilities with his effort and tenacity. He believes that this player is really such a remarkable player so he's very sure that this player will be able to unlock something bigger in the future as well. Meanwhile, a male elf approached Eldar to ask why the necklace that was given to Jiho is colored pink when she can also make a dark blue that is much more suited for Jiho. It takes too long for Eldar to answer his confusion but according to Eldar, it was all by the wool of the sacred tree. After that, she then walks away. The next day, Geo thought that it would be better for him to get started on the sacred tree as soon as possible so he bids goodbye to Eldar. Before he leave, the elves prepared something for his journey. Geo was surprised upon seeing it. It was a well-made elven bow with 30 wooden arrows and a well-made elven rapier. Even though it might not suit him well, Eldar still hopes it can be of help to Geo in his journey. Jiho was excited while holding it and he appreciate the goodness of Eldar and the other elves once again. All elves will wait for him with the hope that they could see the sacred tree one day. Jiho acquired the Idol of Elves title, which means that all the elves will think favorably of him. The GLA members with their captain were still observing Jiho, and they cannot even believe that Jiho received a weapon set from an elf. The chairman feels envious so he ordered his member to move and observe Jiho's tactics. After a while, Jiho is walking alone thinking that he went along with the situation and agreed with the elves so now he was confused about what he needs to do to open his own flower shop because of his current quest which he believes might be difficult to achieve. He was also thinking if he really need to go revive the burn, Lysalan forest. From what he heard from Eldar, this forest is now part of the demon territory and he was scared thinking that he might die before he even reached there. The bulleting boards say that the place is actually a hardcore territory that only top rankers could go, so he was thinking about how he can do it alone when he was still at a low level. He then comes up with an idea to open his shop where the sacred tree possibly grows. The spirit of life replied that he know the right place so Jiho excitedly asked where it is but sad to say. The spirit of life suddenly said that his memory is now blurry which made Jiho annoyed for giving him false hope. Once the spirit of life will remember it, he will inform Jiho about this as soon as possible. For now, Geo will start with leveling his plant observation but there's a level 25 Lux brown bear that instantly appeared from behind which made him scared. Since Geo was startled, he backed off but he was surprised when he saw the bar backed off as well. It never goes near Geo, so he wondered why. The spirit told thinks that the bear backed off by instinct because of Yuo's scary face. But it's impossible for me to look scarier than that bear. Geo stated, the bear attacked him and he tried to dodge. He readies himself and believes that he is much faster than the bear even though he's only level 8 so he concludes that he might be able to win this battle. If he could dodge attacks from elves, he know that he would be able to dodge this bear also. He then pulls his elven rapier from his inventory and dashes toward the bear but his attack power suddenly decreased by using elven swordsmanship. The Lux Brown Bear has invaded the attack of elven swordsmanship and the worst thing is he received 98 damage from the bear's attack which made his bone fracture. His agility has also decreased by 10%. He was so annoyed for receiving so much damage and he thinks that there was no point for him to use the elven rapier to attack. His rapier got thrown somewhere and there's no difference for him to use the bow when he's not skilled at it. He already had a wound on his head but he doesn't care at all. At this point, since he doesn't have any other weapon, he decided to use his own mastery. The bear attacked him once more but he was now determined to win this fight. 
He managed to dodge the bear's attack and immediately punched the bear's underarm but only deals 7 damage. He continues to fight using his fist and punching the bear multiple times until it back off. Jiho's fatigue has increased by 15% due to his rapid movement. He was irritated because all his attacks only deal little damage and once will continue, he'll tire out first. This time, he checked his inventory. While he was fighting with the bear, GLA members were still following him and they both are amazed at how Jiho fought with bare hands. Mei began to worry and he suggests helping Jiho but her captain suddenly appeared and he concludes that Jiho can't be able to win against the bear with his low level. After the fight, he was planning to take the weapon for themselves. Mei insisted to help but the captain was mad and reminded her to harden her heart since this is survival. She believes that Jiho can help them. She sees Jiho's innocent face when he was playing with the pipe and talking to the flowers so she believed that Jiho really has a pure heart. While they are talking, they forgot about Jiho's fighting with the bear not until they heard something. Jiho used that sacred tree seed as a weapon and it deals 105 damage. He continued to hit the bear using the seed and he was glad that it works just as he thought. The spirit of life is screaming and stopping him. Meanwhile, the GLA witnessed Jiho's battle against the bear and the captain realized that his plan was failed again. The captain invited them to go but Mei told them to go back first since she still wanted to observe Jiho. She wanted to believe the innocent side of Jiho that she saw. Jiho defeated the Lux Brown Bear and he leveled up as a reward. He also acquired 11 Lux Brown Bear meat, the gallbladder of a Lux Brown Bear, and 6 Lux Brown Bear claw. Aside from that, he also acquired new titles. The Plant Wielder, additional damages will be given whenever he uses a plant to attack, and the Bear Hands Fighter which made his strength rise by 1 point. After that, he realized that he needs to have to pay more attention to his stat distribution. Despite it being a game, it's amazing how he gets this tired after a fight. If he had gotten into more trouble, he wouldn't have lasted. Jiho's character is currently at level 10 with 42 strengths, 9 intelligence, 30 agility, 20 stamina, and 12 mana. He remembered what Wansik said that fatigue is related to stamina. Since he only invested his stat points in his strength and agility he decided to invest in his stamina for now. He was glad that he was adapting to the game well. Suddenly, Jiho heard something behind him and he thought that the bear was still alive so he immediately readies himself to attack using the sacred tree seed. He was puzzled when he saw that it was a girl trembling and begging him not to hurt her. Jiho was puzzled and Mei continued to beg. Mei was starting to have a conversation with Jiho but Jiho was remained puzzled because he doesn't have any idea who's this girl in front of him. Mei tried to open a nonsense topic but still, Jiho remained speechless. She also tried to directly ask Jiho to tag along and she feels stressed because she thought that Jiho doesn't want to talk with her. Sure, Jiho stated which made Mei surprised as she didn't expect Jiho has really had a kind heart. According to Jiho, the monster in this forest are no joke so he thinks it might be better to fight together than do it alone. He then opens his inventory and handed Mei his elven bow and the 30 arrows since it will be useless if he will keep them. Is more comfortable fighting with bare hands. Mei was thrilled and get the bow and arrows with happiness but she feels a little bit scared because Jiho looks like as if he will haunt Mei in the depths of hell. They started to move and Jiho asked Mei if it was okay with her to stay in this first for a few days because he still have something to check and as expected, Mei agreed to it wholeheartedly. Then, for now, let's get along well. Jiho stated. Four hours later, Jiho is observing some plants while Mei is only following him and Mei feels estranged because all Jiho's doing all along is just talking to himself while observing all kinds of different plants and flowers that are in their surrounding. Jiho also sensed that Mei might be staring holes into his back and he conclude that Mei must think he was above average, or his face must be good looking. Jiho laughed upon realizing it but Mei think that he was laughing like a villain and he looks suspicious of her. Jiho stands and decided to log out first and he informed Mei that he will enter the game again tomorrow afternoon Korean time. Mei said that she's Korean also and after that, they feel awkward with each other. Then, I'll come around that time too, Mei stated. When they were about to part ways, Mei introduced herself and asked Jiho's name. Alsia, Jiho answered. Mei stated that Alsia is fit for Jiho but Jiho is hesitant if he will believe it or not. Jiho arrives at Warren Gym and his father is waiting for him. His father was mad because he was late for five minutes and also felt that Jiho has been acting strange the past few days. What makes you think playing a game in a coffin is a good idea? His father shouted. Jiho concludes that the other gym members obviously told his father about the game. His father also played a game before when he was young so he can understand Jiho. What he doesn't understand is why Jiho is playing in the capsule room instead of on his computer. He believes that Jiho's muscles will lose by just lying down in a capsule. Jiho explained that he doesn't have a chance to become a fighter because his mother strongly opposed it and he also added that he can make it real in the virtual world. He explained that the new world is a game that is played by the entire world. It might be a little different from the fighter his father wants him to be but he thinks they both have the same goal which is to become the number one champion of the game. That's the reason I'm playing the game, Jiho said. 
His father understand that Jiho wanted to be the top ranker in the game and he suddenly asked what is Jiho's class. He was so startled by his father's question and he lied that he was a warrior in the new world. His father was touched and didn't expect Jiho will take his old wish seriously. At the paradise for the noble elves in the Lux Forest, a level came in this forest to find someone. He's currently level 134 and he even reached this level without dying once because of his abilities. He has the title of Die Hard. This title is given to the player who has never died before reaching level 100. Their defense will be increased by 40% in combat, but once they die in combat, the title would be removed. When he entered the forest, he then saw an elf and he approached the elf to help him assist in finding someone named Janos. The elf was annoyed but letting him off since they just celebrated something joyous recently with Jihao. He then ordered the man to leave the forest. The man suddenly laughed hard and pointed his dagger at the elf while threatening that he will execute the elf once it will not escort him to the person he need. The elf was puzzled and glared at the man. At the same time, Gio entered the game. He was almost forced to quit this game after getting caught by his father yesterday. While he was standing and checking his system, he was not aware that Mei is already behind him and greeted him right away. Anyways, please take care of me today as well. Jiho stated and Mei said the same thing. On that day, Jiho still observed plants around them while Mei is observing him. Mei decided to open a topic and asked Jiho why he played New World. According to her, new players are usually too busy leveling their characters so she assumed that Jiho had played this game for a quite while. Since you're always only looking at flowers, could it be that you like flowers? Mei stated which made Jiho pause. Mei was trembling again because Jiho doesn't give her an answer just like what happened to them. Yesterday, Jiho suddenly stands and grabs Mei's shoulders and began to have a terrifying look. Mei thought that Jiho was mad but it was the opposite. He only explained how much he loves flowers and wanted to open his own flower shop. I'm gonna make my own flower garden. Jiho added. He also informed Mei that he cannot be able to be a florist in real life but he'll definitely get the satisfaction that he wanted if he could just open his own shop here. After hearing it, Mei didn't expect Jiho to say it and she now realizes that his ID name Alsia makes sense. She also comes to the conclusion that Jiho's pure devotion may have touched those elves. And as a result, she wanted to try to follow Jiho's path and make the elves like her as well. While she was imagining, they heard a loud noise. They both wondered what it is and Jiho invited Mei to find out what happened. The level 134 Wooster is running away from the elf. He dashed as fast as he can and he looks like he was so scared. He didn't believe that elves is stronger than him. Even though he was too fast to run, the elf still caught him. Why are you leaving? Didn't you mention that you needed to find Janos? The elf questioned. Wooster tried to use his shield but he still flew away after the elf punched him. The elf can even pull the shield and makes fun of Wooster for being so weak. He then kicks Wooster as a result to for him to vomit blood. He's not satisfied yet and kicks him one more. Wooster started to feel weak and the elf really drained almost all of his HPD because of one blow. He didn't even have a chance to escape or even drink a potion. For him to survive, he needs to stall three seconds to use the explosive skill with all of his leftover mana. Since he doesn't have a chance, he decided to use his Twilight Wall skill which made the elf to frighten. He was about to attack the elf but Geo suddenly came and grabbed him tightly that's why his Twilight Wall has been cancelled and sad to say, his mana has been exhausted from casting the skill. He was annoyed with the person behind his back who was also the one who interrupted him in casting skills. When he turned around, he feels danger upon seeing a muscled man in front of him. Geo saw flowers that were damaged because of Wooster. What the hell did you just try to do Geo asked. Wooster thought that Jiho is also an elf but when he saw the ears, he then realized that they are the same humans. He also noticed that Jiho used newbie player gear. He was hesitant upon seeing Jiho's face. For him, it doesn't look human. How dare you heartlessly trample over the flowers. Jiho angrily stated and hardly pushed Wooster. Wooster is also alarmed and takes out his sword. His intention is to execute Jiho but Jiho managed to dodge and strike a punch into the adversary's face. He punched Wooster many times but it only deals little damage. An attack from a bug like you won't even tickle me. Stop bugging me. Wooster stated and started to strike an attack on Jiho. He only needs one hit to finish Jiho. He then jumps and was about to attack but he slipped to the grass and accidentally sliced the flowers. At this point, Wooster's mana is recovering soon and he admitted that Jiho has a pretty battle sense but once his mana will fully be recovered, he's very determined to one-hit Jiho. You just trampled the flowers, but you're slicing them into halves now. I won't easy on you, Jiho stated in an angry tone. He started to punch Wooster again but now, he was too fast which makes Woopa wondered how he become fast. Woopa is very giggled while waiting for his mana to recover. When his mana is already full, he then jumped and used his march skill but Jiho was shocked when he saw that Woopa suddenly freeze while his armor has been cut down into pieces with the help of the elf. 
Wooster can't also move his body, and the system notified him that he has been in a paralyzed state due to the sudden ambush. He started to panic while he was wondering about Gio who kept on dodging and he then realized that Gio is doing the Ippo Makinouchi Dempsey roll technique. Gio takes out the sacred tree seed and punched Wooster using the seed. According to Gio, once his burning first has been lit, it has to keep burning until the fire has burned out. But you're not even using your fist. The spirit of life objected. Wooster already feels the pain and he's now begging Jiho to stop but Jiho didn't listen because he wanted to take revenge for the plants that he has damaged. At last, Wooster died and dropped one level due to the death penalty. He also lost the bulwark of the twilight skill as a PK penalty. He can be able to log in again after 10 hours. He started to disappear and Jiho leveled up three times and increased his evil reputation. Also, he's the one who broke the perfect record of Wooster. He received an honor record title. Additional damages will be given to his opponent who has high fame or a highly evil reputation. May witnessed how Geo fights just because the person trampled over some flowers. Geo grabs the bulwark of the twilight that was dropped by Wooster. The shield belongs to the Knight of Twilight who has protected the Great Holy Empire, Gracia till his end. The elf man explained that Wooster is planning to run amok around their village and he just trying to scare Wooster a little. After hearing it, Jiho realized that Wooster deserved it, especially since he had started trampling the flowers. The elf noticed Mei beside Jiho, and Jiho then introduced Mei and stated that she was the one who was helping him with his research. According to the elf man, Teen Light used to always bring along his assistant everywhere as well in the past. Anyway, please take good care of Sir Alcia. Miss Assistant, the elf said to Mei which made her thrilled upon realizing that there was an elf man who finally likes her. The elf said goodbye to them and also Jiho was about to log out but Mei instantly said that she wants to be Jiho's assistant. Hire you. As an assistant, Jiho shockingly asked. The reason why Mei wanted to become an assistant of Jiho is because of one thing. To have a chance to be acquainted with the elves. She's begging to Jiho and Jiho doesn't have a choice but to allow Mei to be his assistant. Mei was thrilled that he had been recognized as Jiho's assistant. And she already knew that Jiho was a spirit gardener but she doesn't have any idea what a spirit gardener is. She is overjoyed, and she believes that because of Jiho, all the elves will respect and notice her. Jiho is puzzled because Mei is laughing by herself, and while he was looking at Mei, he received a notification informing him that since Mei is already his property as a spirit gardener's assistant, he can always call her, and his plant encyclopedia has been shared with Mei. He was confused about how it worked so he tried to press call assistant and Mei suddenly teleported a little bit near to him. Mei was startled and fall and they both now discovered how the call assistant works. Because of confusion, Mei asked Jiho about the spirit gardener and she even thought that it was one of the classes or a newbie class in the new world. Jiho was thinking if it was necessary to tell Mei about his position here in Lux Forest and the most important for him is he doesn't want Mei to be involved in his dangerous quest. He lies to Mei the spirit gardener is just a special type of florist class and Mei believes it because she already knew how much Jiho loves flowers and wants to have his own flower shop. Since Mei is now Jiho's assistant, she then asked a favor to Jiho to speak comfortably with her. Starting the first day that they meet, Jiho always speaks using honorifics that's why Mei feels suffocated and she cannot express herself. After Wooster died at the hand of Jiho, he is currently in a ghost state caused by death in the Lux Forest. He was so frustrated, especially that his shield was dropped and his die-hard title has been removed from his record. He cannot accept the fact that he was executed for the first time. He immediately reaches out to their guildmaster named Bamboo to inform him that he messed up. He told everything to Bamboo and after that, Bamboo teleported into Lux Forest. Bamboo is a level 274 player and a guildmaster in Prime Guild. He already warned Wooster before not to go into this forest so he scolded Wooster for not listening to him. In the Prime Guild, Wooster is the most anticipated rising star who would be advancing from the rare to the unique class but it was because of the help of Twilight's Barrier. Bamboo asked Wooster about his opponent's information but Wooster doesn't know the ID name of Jiho. He just described it as brutal looked and looked like a high-level player. Bamboo planned to look for Wooster's opponent and he will start to find out first if there was anyone who got a bus driver recently since this is the only way to go in Lux Forest for high-level players. Wooster was still down and he really thought that Jiho is a high-level player pretending to be a newbie. He was so mad and wanted to get revenge no matter what it takes. After Jiho log out, he was eating dinner with his father. He was startled with his father suddenly speak and asked when he will become the best player in the new world. Even in the game, his father wanted him to fight like a warrior rather than an angel. His father also informed him to take good care of himself because he may get sick lying in the capsule for how many hours each day. Don't clean the gym today, and instead do a lower body workout. His father stated, Jiho's father is pleased to see him so enthusiastic about something for the first time, which is why he brought a well-known new world capsule that everyone uses. Jiho was taken aback when he saw it, 
and he had not expected his father to be so generous to him. At the same time, he is concerned about how his father obtained the funds to purchase this famous capsule because they still haven't paid back their debts for their gym. His father told him not to worry because it's not that expensive, and he believes Gio will become a world champion in the new world, so this is the least he can do. Gio asked if his mother knows about it but his father said, that's the reason, son. When she comes back home, cover for me. Meanwhile, Gio's mother named Yunai came home and as expected, she was so mad after she knew that Gio's father brought another random thing instead of paying off their loan. His father lied that he only buy the New World capsule because Jiho is begging him but Yunai knew that he was lying. While they are fighting, Jiho is peeping at them but he also glares at his father with an evil look. His father is giving him a signal to interrupt them but he shut the door which made his father annoyed with him. Jiho is chilling in his room and he whispered that he will never forget his father's sacrifices this day. He feels relieved now that he doesn't need to hide from his father when he will play the new world and opening a flower shop is no big deal now as long as he doesn't get caught. Gio entered the game and noticed that he had almost discovered all the flowers in the Lux Forest that's why he's struggling to look for new flowers now and might not be able to find a new one soon despite how much he searched. May also notice that they have already been to all possible places in Lux Forest during the past few days. Lux Forest is not that big to begin with but according to Jiho, there's still one place left, the summit. May laughed as she believes that only rocks can be found on the summit and she concluded that there are no plants and flowers there but still, Jiho wanted to try as he don't want to give up on the possibility. He decided to go alone and leave May in the forest because he knew she doesn't have much stamina. May was grateful that she would only be staying in the forest but she was alarmed when she heard Jiho say that he would go and ask the elves for some tools. She suddenly grabs Jiho and told him that she can go and get the tools herself from the elves. Meanwhile, Jiho started to climb the summit using a well-made elven climbing axe. It is used for rock climbing purpose and is filled with blessings from the elves. Aside from the axe, he also has a rope from the elves and both tools given by the elves are really helpful to him. When he reached the peak, he was amazed at the view and at the same time, was confused if there are plants and flowers here at the summit. May sent him a voice message asking if he already found a flower and when he said that there is nothing, May began to worry about what else they can do to find more. Jiho decided to go down and the system notified him that his fatigue has reached 90% so he needs immediate rest. Otherwise, he will reach a state of lethargy if he exceed the limit. Jiho still continues to go down the summit and this time, the spirit of life warns him to take a break. He listened to the spirit of life and he was hanging in the middle of the summit for a while. He was about to hang the safety pin but the axe accidentally slipped which made him fall. He thought that the safety pin is still fine now until the system informed him that the safety pin has been destroyed. He started to rattle and pull the rope but he is very unlucky because the rope has snapped. He's screaming so loud and unexpectedly he earned the title of falling with wings which made the impact of the fall reduce. He also earned the title of Tushin. In case of being driven to a cliff, all of his stats will rise. When Gio opens his eyes, he thought that he was dead. Suddenly, the system informed him that he discovered and entered the hidden teen lights conscious. He saw a giant flower in front of him, it was the unblossomed spirit candle. The information about the flower has been added to his encyclopedia right away, and finally, it reached a 100% completion rate. He has reached maximum favorability with the elves of Lux Forest and earned the title of veteran botanist. He can now further analyze any observed plant in more detail. He also received a strong buff for observing the progress of flowers. I could only find the last flower after death, Jiho stated, when he takes a look. The unblossomed spirit candle smelled the fragrance of nature from him. It also smelled a familiar body odor of elves and reminded of teen light through him. The flower is beaming and Geo saw a mini world inside the flower bud. The system informed him that he discovered the world of the flower spirits, Gloria. He earned the title of the one who received the spirit's love. This means that all the spirit will love him. There are beads of light spirits surrounding him and he received a class quest. The world of flower spirits, Gloria, can only exist within the sacred tree. However, after the sacrifice of the sacred tree, Teen Light hid the spirit candle deep within his soul along with Gloria and it. On the very same day he made a promise to let the flower bloom again beside a new sacred tree. And Jiho, the new spirit gardener is obliged to fulfill that promise. The condition for success is the Gloria's full bloom sealed within the spirit candle. The condition for failure is the sacred tree's eternal destruction. After he received his second class quest, the flower is closing again and he acquired 15 spirit candle seeds and the essence of Gloria. At the moment, Geo's body is reconstructed. When the respawn timer is over, he will respawn at the nearest checkpoint. Meanwhile, the respawn timer has passed. He is now sent back to the new world and has been respawned in the Lux Forest Tryon Village. May saw him right away and was worried and also heard that the encyclopedia got completed. Jiho informed her that he died because he fell down the cliff. May was confused after she heard to Jiho what happened. 
Jiho also explained to her that the last flower was hidden together with the spirits which made Mei tremble, even though they didn't complete the entire encyclopedia. Their goal of discovering the flowers here has reached 100% so there's no reason for them to stay any longer. Mei doesn't want to leave Lux Forest because the elves only recently started to recognize her. She started to imagine things again. Things like a romantic fling with an elf. Jiho was confused again upon seeing Mei. Wooster and Bamboo are searching for Jiho in the forest on the outskirts of Lux Forest near the entrance. They truly believe Jiho is a top-tier pro PvP player. They intended to exact revenge. And Lux Forest, according to Bamboo, is the ideal location. When they notice people approaching, Bamboo orders Wooster to prepare for battle. It's almost there, and Wooster immediately recognized Jiho. Bamboo freezes and trembles when he sees Jiho, but Jiho doesn't notice Wooster and passes them by. With the commanding presence and face of Jiho, and the force of absolute power and radiation from his entire body, Bamboo concludes that he was a beast. When they are away from Bamboo and Wooster, Mei wondered why both of them are staring with a grudge. Jiho then realized that one of those men is familiar but he cannot remember at all. Bamboo didn't approach Jiho because he was scared that Jiho is as huge as a boss. He was very sure that Jiho is not an ordinary human guy that's why it was impossible for him to fight. He believes that it will be stagnant water for at least one round and that they should instigate Jiho first and not fight for the time being. For now, I'll put up a guild notice about the hidden expert everyone needs to look out for, Bamboo stated. The Spirit of Life told Jiho about a place called Elysia that's why he decided that their destination for now is to Elysia. They need to pass by the Perma Desert to arrive in Elysia, in the middle of the desert. They saw an oasis so they run towards the oasis because Jiho thought that there is a village nearby. When Jiho was almost in the oasis, the sandy wind suddenly blows and the oasis disappeared. He noticed that the level of the sand slowly rising and he was suddenly pulled by a whirlpool. A strong force that he cannot be able to resist is sucking him in. He didn't know that it was a hidden dungeon. He have discovered the hidden dungeon entrance. The whirlpool stopped and Jiho disappeared. Mei tried to communicate with him but the system cannot connect to Jiho. Mei started to be scared when she realized that she is the only one left in the desert and thought that she may simply gone too. Jiho's reputation has risen for the discovery of a hidden dungeon. He was dropped in a wide hall place and heard a noise coming from the door as it was forcibly opened by the rebel and they are shouting to bring Tyrant Brezel down. Jiho wondered who they are and the system informed him that it was the rebel forces of Kopai. They were about to attack Jiho but then the leader realized that Jiho is not their enemy. Jiho prepared his fist as he was ready to fight back but then he saw the rebels suddenly pause. The leader was trembling because of the appearance of Jiho that doesn't look like an ordinary guy. They all thought that Jiho is the new Brezel's subordinate not until someone is laughing from above and called them foolish people. The rebel forces were all mad at Brezel and all they want is to drag him off the throne and put an end to their curse. Brezel is the king of Kopai, an ancient kingdom, and is yearned for eternal wealth and honor. His endless greed devastated the kingdom, leaving his people in pain and grief. The citizen had rebelled against Brezel, but they have all already been tied to the curse of Brezel, with the endless loop of a meaningless war. Geo has a sudden quest this time. As he is the first one to intrude on this loop, he needs to make his stand on which side he's on. Please lend us your strength. The leader of the rebel stated, Geo has two choices in this quest, either to help the rebel forces defeat the tyrant Brezel, or help the tyrant Brezel and defeat the rebel forces. If he will choose choice 1, the reward is unknown but if he will choose choice 2, his reward will be a change of occupation to the guardian of the hourglass. Jiho was confused about what choice he will choose. You seem like a tough warrior. I shall share my power with you. With this mightly power, punish all those bastards. Brazel stated loudly from above. At the Perma Desert, one member of the Prime Guild which is also a companion of Wooster and Bamboo is here in the desert. She's level 121 named Samanda. She already spent a month here looking for the hidden dungeon. Samanda is ordering the level 30 exploration sand golems to help her find the dungeon and at this time, she was annoyed because the golems didn't find it yet. Suddenly, one golem is running rashly towards her stating that she discovered a strange human. Samanda cast her imitation skill to the golem and transform it into a sand human. The golem told Samanda that she discovered a man who suddenly disappeared under the quicksand. After hearing it, Samanda rushed to the area as she knew that it was the infamous secret dungeon. Going back to Jiho, he chose to be part of the rebel forces and wanted to bring Brezel down. He really doesn't like the side that he chose but he was annoyed that Brezel's expression of saying that he looks like a warrior ticks him off. Which part of me looks like a warrior? He whispered but the rebel leaders hear him and he agreed that Jiho really looks like a warrior which made Jiho to be exasperated. Suddenly, the land is being lifted and there's a sand of golem appears. It's a huge sand golem that was covered with gold all over its body. It's moving and grabbing rebels. Jiho shouted ordering the rebels to dodge but most of them is not good to dodge as him. 
The rebel forces will turn into the sand when they die due to the Brezel's curse. They come back to life to repeat the endless war where they can't even die when they want to. Even if that's the case, Geo couldn't ignore them dying. He shouted to the golem and the golem stared at him and he discovered that it was a level 230 golden sand golem. Jiho is thinking of a strategy and he then walks behind the golem and the man thought that he will go to Brezel not until he dashes into the hole where the golem came from. He concludes that if there's no way out other than the entrance where the rebels came from, then there's only one place. The hole that the golem broke through. He then jumps which made the rebel leader shocked and thought that Jiho is dumb. Jiho falls into a dark area but his eyes are gradually adapting and can vaguely see. He discovered Brezel's secret warehouse and heard a weird noise. Even if it's too dark, he can see that there are creatures surrounding him. An undead, a level 85 fallen knight of a ruined country. They are at a higher level than Jiho but he knows that they are definitely slower than a bear. He then reaches the sacred tree seed to his inventory to use it as a weapon. He believes that once he can manage all of this undead, he will also level up a lot. He started to attack the level 85 fallen knights and the divine power of the sacred tree seed causes additional damage. By using the seed, he can fight easily and level up every time he can eliminate. At this point, there are a lot of undead surrounding him but he feels bored as hell because of how slow the undead are. Jiho was thankful for the divine power of the sacred tree seed because it has a strong effect against the undead. He never expects it to be this useful. He thought it will be an easy fight not until a huge undead appeared and told him that they have done nothing wrong and had only eaten away by a curse. The huge undead is a level 135, the awoken captain of the royal guards. Jiho started to rattle because it was a giant undead knight and he doesn't know how he can be able to fight at this rate. The huge undead knight explained that the tyrant Brezel wills blinded by greed. According to him, Brezel committed a forbidden sin that a human should never do, enough to get him cursed. For his selfish wish for wealth and eternal life, he sacrificed his people with his very own hands. The rebel forces are the citizens trapped in time and they have no choice but to fight to escape the endless curse of repeating time. The huge undead knight has been holding on to the instinct odd protecting this place but the life he felt from Jiho is what awakened him. In this case, Jiho doesn't need to fight with all of these undead knights but the awoken captain of the royal guards has a request for Jiho. It will also be his linked quest. The captain of the royal guards, who protect the Brezel's secret warehouse wishes to end the repeating curse. He needs to enter the heart of the dungeon together with the captain. Jiho was confused so the captain lead the way. The captain touches the gate and when it opens, Jiho saw a massive amount of treasure. What lies beneath Kopai is a near infinite amount of dormant gold mines. Back then, the kingdom was greatly prosperous using the mines, but Brezel the formed ruler of Kopai refused to give all of his treasures to his successors and offered up the souls of his people to the demon. That's the reason why Kopai became an empty desert with endless sandstorms. However, even Brezel had no choice but to make a deal with the demons despite knowing to be a disadvantageous one due to his anxiousness regarding the threats to his power and authority. According to the captain of the royal guards, they can finally put an end to this and Jiho needs to enter the cave that is inside a treasure warehouse. It's quite a small and shabby cave and Jiho doesn't have any idea what he should do. I can only guide you this far. Your future depends on you. After you flip the hourglass, everything will return to its original place. The captain of the royal knight stated. Jiho entered the cave without any hesitation even though it was too small and cramped. He found a door inside and when he opens, he saw a spacious room that has a floating chunk of light in the air in the middle of a giant magic circle. When he checked it above, he then realized that it was the hourglass that the captain was talking about. He thought that the quest was too easy but when he stepped inside the room there is a noise and the system informed him that the curse of the dead is trying to interfere with his soul directly. His recovery rate reduced by 90% and his health continues to decrease. He was surprised to receive a class passive skill. The life-charging spirit gardener stands on the other side of death. A fully charged life will bring him back to life. And curse resistance, which serves as a defense against impure forces, it was because of the help of the spirit of life. In the case of combining the passive skills from the spirit of life, there is only one more thing left. From outside the cave, the captain of the royal guards was impressed by how Geo came all this way with the power of life. According to this undead skeleton, no immortalian has ever stood up to the demon's curse using only their own bodies. While he was waiting for Jiho, the ground began to shake, and he realized what was going on inside the cave. Jiho used an apple covered in mourning due to increase his recovery rate by 150%. He also eats elven spinach pie to send back 50% of the damage received to nature, and the curse resistance is 200%. He also used blue mac jolly made by spirits. In the event of death caused by damage, all his physical strength will be received in one go. By using all this food that the elves have given him, he has earned the title of zombie which helps him decrease any damage received by 1%. He slowly reached the hourglass and when he finally reached it, the time has begun to flow once more and the Kopai's seal has been broken. 
Geo paused as he was waiting for what will happen next. The ground suddenly shakes and he also knows something will come. He panicked when he heard the sound of water in the cave, originally a water canal. The captain of the royal guard slowly vanished and he cannot believe that Jiho really succeeded for an eternity of time. The undead was emotional while saying, Thank you, stranger. Jiho became terrified when the water started to flash from above. All he knows is he must escape in the cave. He ran as fast as he could, but the water swept him away. He gained the title I can see the Dragon King's palace unexpectedly, and his diving ability improved. The Dragon King is also referred to as the Dragon God. Jiho realized that it was not the end yet. He suddenly drowns and his strength dwindles due to a lack of oxygen. His underwater agility improved as he earned the title of Beer Bottle. The wall outside Brezel's secret warehouse has collapsed, allowing Jiho to come out from it. He was perplexed as to where he was, but he noticed someone sitting on the throne. He heard a voice and realized that he was now in Kopai's king's chamber in front of Tyrant Brezel. Brezel was also an undead skeleton, and Jiho concludes that it may also be one of the curses he received after making the deal with the demon. He stares at Brezel for too long because of confusion and Brezel slowly moved and told him not to stare because he was a little bit shy. But still, Brezel is so mad and grabs his sword and walks towards Jiho. It's not too late for you. Hand it over to me, and I shall spare your life. Brezel said which made Jiho more confused but he then realized that it must be the hourglass. He almost forgot about the hourglass and he was glad when it got into his inventory somehow. He was hesitant to give it to Brezel and Brezel lost his patience and becomes furious. He then attacks Jiho and Jiho managed to dodge. Jiho noticed that Brezel is not the same as the undead knights in the secret warehouse. Brezel is too fast but he's crumbling away and Jiho realized that this is what it means for the stop time to start flowing again. The moment he touched the hourglass, everything here began to correct itself to its original timeline and Brezel is no exception. Geo thinks that if Brezel keeps getting weaker then he won't be able to be his opponent. Brezel tried to attack again and what Geo expected is Brezel was still strong and looked like Geo can only avoid Brezel's attack. At this point, Brezel won't allow him to dodge again. He cast a curse of the dead on Geo and Geo's curse resistance isn't able to neutralize at all. He noticed a sapling near him and he then used his skill to speed growth that enhances the plant for a 100% growth rate. Time has accelerated for the plant due to the speed growth skill and he masters the rapid mutation growth skill. The stems are spreading and going toward Brezza to make him stop moving. The plant evolves to a bigger form than its original size and it will last for 20 seconds. Jiho is waiting for the hourglass and he knows Brezel will disappear once the hourglass will stop flowing. Brezel tried to resist with all his strength and Geo spare a little more time to play Brezel until the hourglass stopped flowing and Brezel continued to crumble and disappear. The Tyron Brezel has been exterminated and Geo leveled up three times. The system informed him that the great devil Kalido smiles and he was confused about what it meant. He then saw Brezel's crown, a legendary rank. It's a fancy crown that was used by Brezel. If Geo will wear the crown, he would be crowned as the new king of Kopai. In the perma desert, May is digging the sand in a hope that she will find Geo. While she was digging, there is a golem that suddenly jumped in front of her which made her terrified. The golem feels strange and cast her sand movement skill. It keeps moving until Samanda comes out from the sand. She was so disappointed that she only found a newbie in the desert. She asked for May's information but May couldn't utter any word as she was staring at the leopard print on the cloth of Samanda. Going back to Geo, he already possesses the legendary hourglass as well as the legendary Brezel's crown. The hourglass is evidence of a meeting between the demon and Kopi's last king, Brezel. It possesses the great demon Kalita's power. Geo can use this to summon Kopai's soldiers and the guardian of Kopai's cursed land. Kopai is a country well known for its collaboration with demons. Many countries may treat him with hostility if he resurrects the cursed kingdom in history. Geo concludes that it looks a little dangerous to take the hourglass and the crown but he cannot also throw them away either so he was thinking the best way he should do it. Brezel's place is pretty big but the water now is already starting to fill up. With the amount of water gushing out, he doesn't think that this place was a desert from the start. He suddenly remembered the spirit gardener Teen Light who mentioned that he grew the Lux Forest and the spirit of life who said that if he go to the place Elysia, he will be able to grow a sacred tree. No matter how much he looked at the New World's bulletin board, there was no such information about Elysia so he concluded that he needs to build it himself. Additionally, the hourglass skill Merge Soldier's Summon can provide free manpower so he wanted to cultivate his own garden in this desert. The spirit of life tried to stop what he was thinking but he didn't listen since in New World, he can only depend on himself. He then wears the crown and it suddenly brightens as a sign that he acquired the title of the first king and tyrant's successor. His reputation and potential notoriety have increased greatly. Jiho now has the authority to declare Kopio his own kingdom. Once it is known that Kopai has been resurrected, Jiho's main concern will be notoriety. 
The system asked him if he wanted to declare Kopai his own nation, but he refuses because he doesn't want to spread rumors and besides, he has summon skills that can help him. He tried the soldier summon but his current level is too low. He can only summon up to two soldiers for now and at this time. They cannot also be summoned due to the surrounding floor being covered by water. He tried the golden golem summon but it cannot be also summoned due to his current level and his mana is not enough for a summon. Since he cannot use both skills, he started to think about what he should do to get out of this place. In the Perma Desert, May told Samanda that his friend Geo fell into the quicksand. Samanda tried to ask for more information but May was still confused and doesn't know how she can explain it clearly. Suddenly, they feel some vibration in the ground and Samanda was about to hit May because she thought that May made the ground shake. Someone is coming out and Samanda immediately ordered the golem to prepare for the battle not until Geo comes out which made them surprise. He was wearing the crown and was too shy when the system noticed that the new king of Kopai has started to reign. Mei was shocked and also thankful that Jiho is still alive. Samanda also knew it from the moment he saw Jiho's face. He's the player who's on their guild's wanted notice board. When she saw Jiho she believes that Jiho is really strong, especially by looking at his face. Samanda noticed the crown on Jiho's head and she was annoyed thinking that Jiho stole Brezel's crown. She asked Jiho how he get the crown but Jiho doesn't want to explain because he will take too long to tell everything about it. If I want that promotion to the unique class guardian of the hourglass then, I'm the one who's supposed to be honored with Brezel's favor, Samanda stated which made Jiho realize that Samanda said is the choice to quest option. He then informed Samanda that he already executed Brezel. Samanda was shocked because she was thinking about her unique class promotion. Instead of Brezel, I'm the king of Kopai now, Jiho said. Samanda is thinking that her promotion quest is going to be given by Jiho. And Jiho is the one who will promote her. The system confirmed that there is a new king of Kopai and she can only be rewarded once she will earn the trust of the new king, Jiho. Samanda is trembling and slowly walking through Jiho. Jiho thought that Samanda wants to fight so he prepared his fist and ready himself to fight back. He has been more confused when Samanda kneeled in front of him and congratulate him on becoming the new king. Samanda forcibly acts in front of Jiho just because of her quest that she wanted to complete. They also kneeled in front of Jiho which made him shy. From behind, Bamboo and Wooster are observing them, thinking that Samanda, their guildmate may betray them. While looking at Jiho, Bamboo feels scared and believes that Jiho is indeed a high-ranked player. Samanda explained that she came here in the desert searching for Kopai's king quest. Jiho told her to speak comfortably but she sees Jiho as a commander-in-chief so she shouts and stands erect but that is not what Jiho means. They interrupts asking Jiho if he really now a king and Jiho answered that he had thought that being a king might help him open a flower shop in this area. Mei and Samanda were confused about how he can make a flower shop in the desert so Jiho told them to look behind him. There is already water and the curse on this land seems to be lifted after Brezel's death. With the groundwater starting to flow again, the water has already started to fill out where Geo came from. Mei was amazed and concluded that it may turn into an oasis and Geo confirmed it. That is the reason why he decided to start making a flower shop here. Let's make this wasteland bloom again, Geo said while getting the Efeld spore in his inventory. This will be his first flower to plant here in the Perma Desert. He then used his fast growth skill to the spore and it sprouts right away until it blooms. While observing him, Samanda wondered what the skill that Jiho used was and also about his class. She becomes interested to know more about Jiho and the sort of heinous thing he planned to do. Jiho was glad upon seeing the Efeld's flower. Just like Teen Light, he will also start with the Efeld's flower too to make his own flower shop. May already understand that Jiho can summon free laborers through the hourglass he got from the dungeon and in order to make it, he needed to become a king. Since he didn't have enough mana to use the skill, he invested all the points he got from executing Brezel into mana. It said that he can summon two people earlier with his mana so he decided to give it a try now and cast Summon Mirage Soldiers. At this time, there are four people who can be summoned with his current mana level. The soldier leader was shocked upon seeing the place as he thought he was put to sleep forever. He also saw Jiho and he remembered that Jiho is the crazy man who jumped into a hole where the golden golem come from. He was mad when he knew that Jiho is the one who summoned them to make them suffer again. All of them were mad but Jiho remained calm and said, All of you, do something for me. The soldier leader thought that Jiho will give them murderous order not until Jiho guffaws and told them all that he needs their help for him to open a flower shop. The level 45 Mirage soldiers were puzzled but in the end, they still followed Jiho's order to dig the sand. Samanda also ordered the sand golem to keep the groundwater flowing. Samanda is looking at the spirits and golems thinking that if she will be promoted, she might do this thing as well. While she was observing Jiho, she realized that Jiho is not the type of person to be connected with flowers just by looking at his face. Whatever it takes, gaining Jiho's trust and getting the promotion is her priority right now. Jiho's first goal is to moisturize the area since they cannot wait forever for the water to rise from the ground. 
He believes that it will be done if they will all continue to dig for two months and bring up the groundwater. Upon hearing it, Samanda is disturbed and frozen because she cannot believe that she will stay here together with Jiho and Mei making a flower shop. Jiho whispered to Mei that he will go first to the Lux Forest to ask for a bit of advice on how to grow the garden. Mei also wants to come with him but Jiho won't allow her because he feels something strange about Samanda and he has an idea that Samanda is after something so he told Mei to observe Samanda while he was not around. Meanwhile, Samanda was annoyed was Jiho left after giving him work in the desert. Suddenly, he heard some noise and she was too excited thinking that it is support from her guild so she can steal the crown. When it arrives in the area, it was Jiho carried by the elves shouted that the spirit gardener announced his arrival. Samanda was shocked once again after she discovered that Jiho has a connection with the elves in Lux Forest. She cannot believe that Jiho built up many favorability points with the elves. She was also confused why the elves called Jiho a spirit gardener. The elf was checking the water in the desert and according to him, as time continues to go by, more and more water will show up and naturally the desert will start to improve on its own. The elf noticed some spirits in the area and Jiho was startled after hearing him. He just explained that the dead spirits help him to make a flower shop and he plans to give them labor contracts and pay them above the minimum hourly wage. As expected of the spirit gardener, the elf stated, seeing Jiho and the elf vibes together, made Samandra confirm that an elf showing much favorability to a player is possible. Mei walks towards the elf and Jiho and Samanda stopped her because she knew that the elves might attack her but what made her shocked is that Mei can converse with the elf too. Meanwhile, since they already checked out the site for the flower shop, the elf was thinking that they can now start with the design plan. He promised Jiho that he will build a place where Jiho will be 100% satisfied. Jiho was too excited and many plans comes up in his mind. Right now, elves will return back to Lux Forest to bring Jiho the materials he needs in a few days. They are dancing out of excitement while Samanda was envious. White Alcia's party was cultivating the desert. There was a continental city far from Lux Forest called Idrin. In Idrin, there was a guild that claimed to be the strongest in the New World. This guild was Russian-based went by the name of Brown Bear Guild. Within the game, they performed ill-mannered acts like indiscreet PKs, looting, and dungeons blockades. Even though it was a place famous for racism, they were still able to obtain great power and occupy the city. And today, it's time to start the coronation. Here in Idrin, more people than usual are gathered together to form a spectation. Today players and NPCs are one to watch the coronation. Although the opinion of the Brown Bear Guild is divided, it's true that this is a great achievement for New World history. Brown Bear Guild was just about to make a great stepping stone in New World's history. The Guild Master is level 314 named Crocking claims that he is the New World's first king. He announces to everyone that he will be the New World's new king starting from this day. They were all celebrating not until there was a global alert informing everyone that the second king has been born from the native player from the new world which is Crocking. They were all shocked to discover that Crocking is not the first king. Crocking was so mad because he was just about to make history but was interrupted. He was shaking and shouted to his servant ordering him to find the one who announced himself as the first king. Find him and bring him in front of me. Crocking angrily said. The news has spread to all the players and Wansik laughed when he know about how Brown Bear Guild embarrassed. Geo asked why he laughed and he explained that there was a guild called the Brown Bear Guild made by the Russian skinhead guys who start small but all the races started to gather more and more so it become the largest guild. Even though racism is a serious crime, it's now really a problem in New World. They're doing whatever they want virtually that they couldn't do in reality. Those guilds have been preparing for a long time to become the player's first king. They were boasting so much but ended to be the second king and it was posted on the notice board where everyone can see it. Jiho was alarmed when he knew that there is a second king especially when Wansik told him that the Brown Bear Guild will surely search for the first king. If they find him, then they'll probably chase and execute him until he quits the game, Wansik said. Wansik is unaware that Jiho is the first king. He even stated that the first new king could be a great player, which is why he did not announce the day he becomes king. Jiho does not respond to him. Instead, he was thinking that if he made a country proclaim, a global alarm would have declared him as the first king. Meanwhile, Jiho connected to the game and Mei approached him right away and were very excited because she now realized that Jiho is the new first king. Jiho doesn't want it to spread so he told Mei that he was not the first king but Mei was too easy to believe because, for her, not everyone's a king even if they wear a crown. Jiho suddenly feels that someone is staring at him and he was right that it was Samanda. Mei laughed and said to Samanda that Jiho is not the first king but Samanda insisted and said that she was positive that it was Jiho. When Mei left, Jiho told Samanda that he just wants to lay low and he don't like any rumors. If possible, please pretend you don't know, Jiho said and Samanda agreed to him right away. 
The elf has arrived together with a spirit horse. According to the elf, this whore was the descendants of the unicorns. During the elf movement, they survived much harsher conditions. Mei was amazed upon seeing a unicorn horse and she cannot believe that it exists in New World. The elf brings a lot of materials for building Jiho's flower shop. It advances while Wasu log. The moon and sunlight wash the wood. It is especially resistant to heat, and if exposed to moonlight, it will regenerate and grow stronger. Jiho was very excited that at last, he can now build his own flower shop. He roared loudly because of too much excitement as this is what he always wanted, a flower shop. Mei and the elf were also proud and happy for Jiho. After a few days, Jiho already has a shop in the desert. He feels so emotional while looking at it as he cannot believe that his dream is happening even if it's in the new world. The wood they used is a little difficult to work with. They grow roots on their own if left on the floor at night. It transforms into a metal fort, able to withstand any disaster, and its durability even outperforms that of rocks. Even if Jiho is the spirit gardener, the elf knows that he will be better at dealing with Wawasu. Samanda was already amazed at the relationship between Jiho and the elves calling a spirited horse just to carry goods plus the Wawasu makes her astound. He reaches out to his co-guild named Kwasan and Kwasan knows that Wawasu is the highest ranked material. As a merchant class and according to him, Wawasu is mostly used to make high-grade bows or arrows, and also famous for being a rarity in the market since it's difficult to cultivate unless an elf. Wawasu that are distributed in the continent is mostly grown in a small amount by the outstanding spirits from the Lushan Empire, the most powerful country in the continent of Hasper. They're monopolizing it so the price is quite high. Samanda was confused of how much it will cost if someone will build a house with Wawasu and she was shocked when Kwasan told her that it will cost about a billion. Jiho is looking at his Efelt's flower and he was glad that it grows well in the desert. Now that the shops have been built, he thinks that the only thing left to do is to plant the sacred tree seed. He doesn't want to be hesitant to avoid being late planting the seed. The spirit of life told him that it's okay to be hesitant sometimes but according to Jiho, being hesitant is not okay. This is his home and a place to take care of and he will call it Elysia. He summoned the soldiers and told them that there is something important for them to handle. He also apologizes to them for calling and bothering them all the time but they have no problem with it. Looking at the flower's bloom makes them realize that all their efforts helping Jiho were worth it. The leader of the soldier once thought that Jiho is a greedy man just like Brezel. However, the smell of flowers blooming in this desert sees this as an opportunity for them. Jiho told them that he needs some help with fetching some soil and poop from the spirit horses to use as fertilizer. Upon hearing it, the leader then realized that it isn't the smell of flowers but the smell of poop instead. Meanwhile, the soil of the Lux forest and the poop of the spirit horses are already ready. Jiho thought about it enough. He did the best he can at this stage. He then started to plant the seed and stomp the soil together with the Mirage soldier. After they plant the seed, the system gives him the quest update. The method of raising the sacred tree is unknown and it will never be easy. However, Jiho as a spirit gardener is the only one capable of doing so. The wool of the sacred tree will reach him only if he can make it sprout. The spirit of life also said that there's something that doesn't feel right about this. One elf and Eldar came to the desert to visit Jiho's flower shop. Eldar was amazed upon seeing a green field spreading in the desert. She then meets Jiho and told him that she was glad that Jiho started to regrow the sacred tree. But the sacred tree is planted in the middle of the desert, but Eldar doesn't have any problems with it since Elders elves have a terminal that connects them to the sacred tree. It was faint but I could hear a grumbling voice from the sacred tree, Eldar stated which made Jiho worried. But according to Eldar, the sacred tree has always been grumpy so Jiho doesn't need to worry about it too much. Jiho planted the sacred tree in the middle of the desert because he thought it will be a good place. The elves cannot interfere with Jiho's judgment since the sacred tree left everything to him as a spirit gardener. Eldar informed him that he needs to accommodate the sacred tree nicely for it to grow and sprout well. He should have a conversation with the sacred tree just like he did with the Efeld's flower. Upon hearing it, he grasps thinking that he needs to have a conversation again with a plant and can't even get any response. By the way, Elder, I'm curious about something, Jiho said and Eldar was happy to give him an answer. After how many days, Jiho and Samanda are together. Samanda asked Jiho if he have any plans to grind his levels. She was curious that Jiho have been continuously doing something after the Elder Elf came by last time. Jiho was too busy making a spirit gardener's Efelt's flower soup and fried Efelt's flower. The flower has already bloomed in the desert but the observation progress for the Efelt's flower wouldn't exceed more than 60% so he thought it was strange. That's why he asked Eldar about his confusion. Eldar advised him that flowers and all types of plants aren't just grown to look at them. They all have their own uses. Some are used as medicine. 
and tonics, some are also even used as condiments. They all have diverse uses. The spinach pie that Eldar gave him last time was actually a harmonious dish made with 15 ingredients together. She also stated that it's not all just about growing flowers. To go further than that, you'll have to understand everything about them. Only then, you'll be able to hear their voice. Eldar said. She didn't tell Geo everything because it wouldn't be fun if she did. That's why now, Geo tried to discover some uses for the Efeld's flower. He tried to make it into food but he failed so the next thing he will try is to make it into potion. He doesn't want someone to disturb him by making potions so he told Samanda to go to May and leveled up together. Samanda told him that May can't level up a lot due to the huge difference between their levels, but Geo informed her that May doesn't need to level up a lot because she has something else to do. Meanwhile, Geo told May and Samanda to leave and go hunting, and Samanda now realized that May is Geo's assistant. When they are not around and also the elves went to fetch more materials, Geo was ready to make potions. He thought that nobody can disturb him this time not until someone is knocking at the door. There's no one else in his shop so he was confused about who was outside. When Geo comes out, he sees several elves outside in his shop. They are from different tribes of elves and they come to Geo because they hear the voice of the sacred tree. They were amazed at Geo for making a flower garden in the desert. And according to them, Geo is no different from Teen Lai. While they were talking, someone captured them and posted the picture on New World's forum and Wansik was surprised to see a photo of Geo with the elves. Geo tries to lie that he doesn't have any relationship with the elves but Wansik knows that he was lying because he keeps on wiggling his toes which is also a sign of his nervousness. Wansik can't believe that Geo is now the center of attention in a bizarre situation. He didn't expect Jiho who doesn't even know about games will cause a huge event and now is very lucky to get the favorability of the elves in the Lux Forest. He was very curious about how it happened so Jiho explained everything from how he unlocked some quests and how he was trapped and trying to survive in the desert. Wansik was envious after he heard to Jiho everything. He didn't know that Jiho was playing the game better than he expected. He only thought that Jiho would simply be picking flowers but now he's completing quests easily. Because of curiosity, Wansik asked if he was the first player king and Jiho laughed and lied that it's impossible for him to be a king. I joked originally, but what's with your toes? Wansik stated because he saw again Jiho's toes wiggling and he knew that Jiho is lying again. Meanwhile, they entered the game and Wansik informed Jiho that he will go to Perma Desert to check his flower shop. Jiho can't do anything but let Wansik since he already knows everything. At this time, more and more elves came into the desert after hearing the voice of the sacred tree. It's already like a population of a small city. Geo called Samanda and asked her if she knew any architects as he was planning to build a house for the elves in the desert. Samanda said that he knows someone with a special construction class and has experience in completing architects' quests in different places. Upon hearing it, Geo told her to ask the player if he was interested in working in the desert. The player's name is Giant, a level 184 outstanding architect. Before Samanda reached out, he received a class quest to build a piece of work that no one has ever tried to make before. He didn't have any idea what piece of work he can do but when Samanda called him, Samanda informed him that there is a man looking for an architect to build a house in the Perma Desert. When he heard that it will be in the desert, he was a little bit hesitant because he believes that it was hard to build a proper foundation in the sand. Samanda told him that he will not regret it because there are migrating elves heading to the place. To put it simply, we need someone to build houses for the elves, Samanda added which made Giant be shocked and decided to accept the job offer. After a while, Giant goes to the desert and was frightened to see Jiho in a scary appearance. Jiho explained to him that the elves came so sudden in huge groups that why they temporarily living in a tent. Based on the growing number of elves, Giant concludes that the place will be crowded in the future. I'll leave it in your hands to make a place for all of them to stay. Jiho stated and the system informed him that he has the right to create a quest since he is a king. The goal is to build housing for the elves to live and if Giant will successfully finish the quest. He will receive great favorability from the elves and will also be rewarded with Twilight's Barrier. Giant wondered how a player presents a grand quest, especially since it is a big-scale quest. Jiho was shy because he thought that Giant doesn't like the quest but he didn't know that at this point. Giant is already thinking that he might be the first king. For him, class promotion is more important than the Twilight Barrier as a reward but in the end, he still accepts the quest given by Jiho and he promised that he will do his best to build a house for the elves. Giant never designed a project on such a large scale but he believes that it would definitely be possible if he relied on all his experiences. He thought that it would be easy because everyone always likes his work. He didn't expect that the elves will be too harsh on him. All of the elves looks down upon him and he doesn't have any favorability left. His favorability reached rock bottom with every word he said to the elves. He wanted to give up but he cannot do it. He just motivates himself thinking that he's currently a level 1 newbie player. And will start from the very beginning. Two days later, there were already changes in the Perma Desert and Samanda didn't expect the elf migration to be huge when they are about to enter the shop. 
One elf blocked them as he can smell the fragrance of nature from Samanda and May. May told him that she was the spirit gardener's assistant that's why the elf smiled at her but he covered his nose and told Samanda that she smells unpleasant. Samanda was annoyed but May explained to the elf that Samanda is not a bad person, instead, she was Alcia's knight. May also said that both of them came back from an expedition. They get a flower picture book and a seed. The elf allows them both but when it comes to Samanda, he advised Samanda to be careful. Not long ago, there was this annoying guy who claimed he'll build houses here. If you don't want to turn out like him, you should behave yourself. The elf stated, when both Samanda and May entered the shop, they found Giant and were very emotional thinking that he was not a good architect. May doesn't know who he was so Samanda said that Giant is a famous architect and the one she recommend to Jiho. She knows Giant a good architect so she wondered how he turn out like this. Jiho was behind them and explained that the elves' attitude towards humans haven't changed even if he tried to talk to them. He also concludes that the elves' hostility to Giant was still high. Upon hearing it, May remembered her bitter memories with the elves. According to her, as a member of GLA, they all experienced before what Giant experienced now. The elves are cold to them and only Jiho is an exception. She decided to join GLA because she doesn't have any choice before and it was the option for her to survive in the Tryon village. Giant is in bigger shock now since he's actually well known as an architect. He must lose his mind after the mental damage done. Jiho concludes that Giant is too weak-minded for being down only after two days. May disagree with him and offer Jiho to ask for help from the members of GLA. She opens her system to check their guild. May showed Jiho their conversation in their guild and Jiho feels a little bit annoyed when he reads that the GLA guild called him a monster. According to May, GLA members need help since they're stuck with the remaining elves within the forest and once Jiho will help them, those people will also help Jiho build a house for the elves here in the forest. On the other hand inside the Lux forest, GLA members and the chairman named Breeze were happy that they get neutral favorability from an elf. May suddenly call him and while he's talking to May, the members are gossiping about May but they were cut off when Breeze shouted and pulls his scarf and then throw it which made the members to wonder what he was doing. Breeze is only a level 12 player and he was screaming saying, we've got an opportunity, everyone. They were too noisy out of excitement not until one elf came and scolded them for being too noisy in the forest. The little favorability they piled up was gone but it doesn't matter to Breeze anymore and this is not important to him now. What May offered to him is an opportunity for them to leave in the Lux Forest. The next day at the entrance of Tryon Village, May with one elf are waiting for the GLA chairman. He comes to May alone as only a representative of their guild but according to him, the number of people part of the GLA left in the village is about 50 and what he wants is to bring all of them to the desert. May was happy that Breeze accept her offer and they will both go together go to the desert while the elf will afterward lead the other GLA members. May share with Breeze the quest that they need to complete. It's a consolidation quest made by Jiho. The task they need to do is to help the elves in making the new frame for the city and the possible reward will be 20 pieces of the spirit gardener's Efelt's flower essence. Breeze was surprised because the reward is an advanced potion and as a part of GLA, health recovery is important to them to run from the elves. The elf who accompanies May is glaring at Breeze and informs him that they are only getting this opportunity because it's the spirit request from the spirit gardener so they must be grateful. When Breeze and May arrive at the desert, Breeze can't believe that there's a flower garden in the desert. When he meets Jiho, he was impressed that nothing changed in Jiho's appearance. Jiho informed him that they will meet a lot of elves in the area and he was planning to make a city for them to live here. Since Breeze is a member of the GLA for a long time, Jiho knows that Breeze can help to solve their first problem which is Giant. Giant has been in the worst condition for a few days and according to Breeze, he's progressed to the fourth stage. GLA made classifications to take care of each other in their guild. They have five stages of intensive care. It's a rating system where they place newbies who come to the Lux Forest for the first time at stage 1. Anyone who experiences the cold and arrogant attitude of the elves is bound to collapse. Also, looking at their beautiful appearance regardless of whether they are a man or woman they feel like they've become an amoeba. In the second stage, the person will try to put effort and try to overcome it but soon will be frustrated. And stage 3 is the stage where they lose their mind and shame. Stage 4 is the stage of awareness of reality. Just like Giant, it's a stage where he comes to accept the fact that he's trash. The last stage is not easy. It's actually the time for the GLA to intervene. They try to reform and help players to realize everything and make them accept life as it is. That's why the stage 5, they just surrender. Jiho informed Breeze that Giant is in charge of designing the city but in just a matter of few days this has happened. Breeze understands it because he knows that if someone will approach the elves recklessly, it will be bound to a negative outcome. That's why I would like to request you to make Mr. Giant feel better, Geo stated and showed Breeze the quest that he made. It's a job change quest in which he needs to heal those who were hurt by the elves which is Giant. Once he will successfully completes the quest, he will be rewarded Elf Counselor. 
Breeze was trembling after he saw that the quest will be a job change quest. He was crying because this is his first time getting this kind of quest and because of this, he found his reason to keep living. Thank you for giving me such a precious opportunity Sir Alcia, Breeze stated which made Geo confused. On the other hand, the other GLA members left in the Lux Forest. The elf handed them a beginner elven axe that is used for logging. The elf told them that they should learn to log the Walhwasu and also informed them that it was a special request made by the spirit gardener. The elf scolded them every time they have done something wrong. They were trained by the elves and they feel sad that this elf only made them feel that they are only slaves. They just think of their guild chairman who always informed them to conquer every stage of intensive care. Meanwhile, the sun is too strong and weeds and the Efelt's flower are the only ones that seem to adapt in the desert. Jiho is also having a hard time growing their seedlings even if he planted them here so he was thinking of a new solution. Samanda suddenly came informing him that she finished cleaning up the flower shop's warehouse and she was curious about the potions that were piled up near Jiho's warehouse. It's the Efelt's flower essence. She asked if Jiho only planned to use them as a reward for the quest and she concluded that it will be a waste for it to only be used that way. She explained that New World's immediate recovery items are very valuable. If the potion has a 10% immediate recovery and 10% stamina regeneration then she believes that it's a good idea to sell it among the players. The recipe of it is already complete and the ingredient is the very common Efelt flowers. Samanda suggested that it's possible to market it as a cost-effective item plus the option to recover the percentage itself is more valuable than any other item of the same class. What Samanda said made Jiho realize that there are many people earning money in New World. He was thinking that he should also be playing the game just like them since they have loans that need to pay. He then asked Samanda if she knows anyone who want to buy potions in a bulk. Samanda called her friend Kwasan to inform her that she have potions to sell and she wanted to know the possibilities and the price for them. Kwasan is a unique class level 110 player and she immediately asked Samanda for the item she wanted to sell. It's called Spirit Gardener's Efelt's Flower Essence. I've shared it with you so have a look, Samanda answered. Kwasan checked her inventory and she thought that it is not the best item since Samanda stated that mass production was possible but when she saw the item, she was surprised while she was in the middle of calculating it in her head. She didn't give any answer to Samanda about the price but instead, she asked about the hotspot of their neighborhood. Samanda stated that the place has only just started building so they don't have one yet. Send me the location now, I'll be there immediately, Kwasan said, in the Prema Desert. All of them are too busy with their different jobs while Jiho gladly observed his area. Samanda suddenly came and she was together with Kwasan. Kwasan then introduced herself as well as Jiho. Shall we take a look at the item first? Jiho stated which made Kwasan frightened because of his face. She then glanced at Samanda and Samanda whispered to her that she will not do anything illegal. Both Jiho and Kwasan go inside Jiho's warehouse and Jiho let her show the essence of the Efelt flower. Kwasan was amazed by the quality of the essence and she also noticed other things inside apart from the essence. Jiho explained that he was experimenting while creating the essence and upon hearing him, Kwasan was curious so she decided to check it herself. She used her goblin's kaleidoscope to improve her ability to analyze the items. She checked first the advanced grade spirit gardener's dry dew mushroom tea which increased curse resistance by 1%. Jiho also has advanced grade spirit gardener's stir fried felt flower that heals HP by 10. Lastly is the advanced grade spirit gardener's acorn pine needle wrap. Geo has done a lot of things to increase the progress of the observation and he thought that it ended up being a failure. Players can craft most of the food themselves and Jiho's invention is only an advanced grade but Kwasan was hesitant about the qualities so she asked Jiho if she can taste it herself. When she tasted the wrap, it was a bit bitter but the scent of pine needles slowly spreads throughout his entire mouth. Does it taste bad? Jiho asked but Kwasan said that a high grade food items are different from normal grade dishes. In the new world, the taste of the dishes that Jiho made is enhanced. She also added that for the players who only see buffs as valuable. The taste of the food in the game doesn't matter at all but the story completely changes for the NPCs of the new world. She also believes it will more than appeal to the upper class NPCs. Just as there are many different players, NPCs with all kinds of different personalities and settings exist in the new world. Hwasun was absolutely sure that all Jiho's dishes will be to the NPC's liking. Because of that, Kwasan decided to distribute Jiho's potions and other dishes to the upper class. So you were a really skilled chief, Kwasan stated as a compliment to Jiho but Jiho was annoyed upon hearing it. Kwasan was shaking while Jiho said, Let me just make one thing clear here. I am an owner of a flower shop. Kwasan was puzzled and can't believe that Jiho is a florist. Meanwhile, Jiho let out his feelings to Samanda. He feels embarrassed that Kwasan thinks he's chief that's why he said something without realizing it. But they ended up talking about Kwasan distributing the products to a whole store. At this point, he was thinking that they really need an upper building and he believes that it will only happen once Giant will come to his senses again. 
Giant and Breeze are together and Breeze advised Giant that he should break his imaginary fantasy about the elves since they are simply not as noble and kind as they have been portrayed in the fairy tales. They are terribly hostile toward humans. Giant was hurt that elves insult his personality and racially discriminate without any hesitation. If you want to talk with the elves, you only have one long shot, and that's to face reality unconditionally. You have to lower your head to them. Breeze said and decided to demonstrate what he stated. He runs to the elf and greeted him and runs back toward Giant. Giant was puzzled not until the elf smiled and thought that the humans have improved. Giant was shocked upon seeing it and decided to try it himself. At this time, the elf responded to his greetings and he was very emotional and called Breeze a teacher. Jiho saw them both and he's wondering if Giant already has an improvement. Kwasan reaches him to ask if he has checked the auction house. According to Jiho, he saw some posts on the bulletin board but he was still curious about the public's reaction to his products. Kwasan posted it for 10 gold but ended up being sold out even though she jumped the price to 30 gold at the auction house. She also said that the nobles loved the cooking products and a lot of nobles wanted to buy more. When the call ended, Jiho was thinking that he ends up earning gold by selling potions and food so he was curious about how much it will be in real life cash. May suddenly appear and answer his confusion. According to her, it may be roughly around 10. One but Jiho was disappointed that it only comes up to a small amount after they took everything out of the warehouse. Jiho was thinking if there was any way to sell only flowers and May said that in games. Flowers aren't equipment nor jewelry so it is not just a material item. Since it is an ornament, Jiho decided to arrange some flowers in his warehouse since he is a flower shop owner after all. Meanwhile, Jiho creates his own Efeld's flower vase. The progress of observation didn't change at all even after making potions or cooking but this time, it suddenly increased all at once. The spirit of life says that Jiho has been recognized by the flowers but they cannot communicate like the spirit of life. Jiho received a notification informing him that the flower arrangement works that's why he was very excited to think that it will be advantageous for people to come and visit his shop. What's important for him now is to maximize the observation progress so he needs more diverse flowers and technology. Unexpectedly, Wansik arrives at Jiho's flower shop. He is already a level 185 man-at-arms. He shouted for Jiho's ID name and the elves started to glare at him. He thought that the elves were only thinking that Alsia is a perverted name that's why the elves were staring at him. Elves already surrounded him but all of them didn't give any answer to Wansik. While he may have really dirty and terrifying eyes, he's really not a pervert. His name is Alsia. He should be here somewhat, Wansik loudly said but ended up being beaten by the elves. Don't you ever disgrace Sir Alsia again. Since this is your first time, I treated it lightly, but there won't be a next time. The elf stated and Wansik keeps apologizing to them. He suffered in pain and when the elves left, Breeze approached him saying that the elves shows extreme hostility towards Wansik. He also introduced himself as an elf counselor and was mainly responsible for providing guidance on how to deal with the elves to players who are advising Helsert for the first time. Wansik believes that Helsert is not the name of this area because he knows that Jiho won't give his own land a name that is combined with Hell and Desert. Breeze offered that he can give counseling to Wansik but Wansik rejected his offer and informed Breeze that he is a friend of a guy that is currently here in the desert. Breeze asked whose friend he was talking about and Wansik answered that he was looking at the pervert man named Alsia. Breeze covers his mount and informed him that in the Perma Desert, there is a rule. Rule number one is they all must absolutely never talk about Alsia at all. The elves will be annoyed once they will hear that someone is only addressing Jiho as a guy or a pervert. Wansik can't believe everything and wanted to meet Jiho as soon as possible. A week before Wansik came, Jiho informed everyone that he will go to the Red Spire southeast of the Terrace Continent. He was thinking to have a thermostat in order to grow various plants in the desert since there's no way to control the climate in the desert. Both Samanda and May offered that they can come to serve Jiho but Jiho declined their offer because no one will stay for the garden management. And besides, the elves are ready to accompany him. Breeze also approached and handed a sword to him. So Jiho ended up heading to the Red Spire of the Terrace Continent with his loyal elves helping him to execute monsters on the road. It was indeed also a very comfortable trip. He was thankful for the help of elves taking care of all the mobs on the way but the experienced gain is almost non-existent. He feels like he was wasting a perfect chance to level up. He was also observing the elven swordsmanship thinking that it was flexible and he can clearly see every part of their movement but still, he was more comfortable using fists compared to weapons. Could I also learn the swordsmanship which you all practice? Geo asked since he doesn't have a seed to hit anymore, nor a combat skills skill that he can use in a battle. The elf said that it wouldn't be efficient for Geo's body type to learn the rapier swordsmanship but physical skills might work. Geo wondered if the elven physical skills exist and the elf explained that swordsmanship, 
archery, as well as physical skills, are all a foundation of elven martial arts, since they are in the desert. The number of spirits of the land is overwhelming, and the spirits of the land have strong and destructive powers, so they are suitable for physical skill. While he was explaining, there was a monster behind him and Geo keeps reminding him but he stay calm and his fists suddenly shine. When he raised his fist, he attacks the monster without looking at it. He then explained that the thing he does is the basis of elven martial arts, which is to communicate with nature and borrow the power of the spirits called elven self-defense, elbow. By just listening to the elf, Geo learned the elven vision combat martial art elbow. It's a combination of elf and boxing. Geo acquired the elbow skill and he's ready to try it with the help of the spirit of life. When he tried his first attack, the sacred flash is flashing with additional 482 attack power added. The elves are cheering for him and they saw teen light to Geo's movement. Several monsters appeared but when the monster was about to attack him, it was struck by an arrow with the help of the elves as they want Geo to focus on perfecting his elbow skill. The elves will cover and protect him safely as they don't want to only watch Geo fighting alone. Because of them, Geo was very eager to master his elbow skill. Three hours later, he hit a hard object 300 times in a row with his bare fist. His strength and stamina have permanently increased by three. The elf is holding the scorpion while Geo hit it multiple times. Because of the level difference with the scorpion he can hit it multiple times until it dies. The hit he launched is not enough and the elf told him that he needs to hit 700 more times to get a good useful skill. He followed what the elf said and even hit the scorpion 1000 times in a row with his bare fists. He was thankful for the elf-style special training as he was able to level up and improve the mastery of the skill altogether and he was also willing to continue his training as they travel towards their destination. Meanwhile, they arrive at the big city which is in the Rassel Kingdom. At this point, Geo is already a level 82 player with 275 power, 69 intelligence, 180 agility, 205 health, and 146 mana. Many people saw Jiho and were surprised that he was together with several elves. The elves remain calm because Jiho already asked them a favor. They are heading to the blacksmith as Jiho needed a glove-like weapon. When they arrive, they thought that no one is inside so Jiho stated that they just look for another blacksmith. When they were about to leave somebody spoke from behind and stated that he smelled disgusting ears again. Jiho was shocked upon seeing that it is not a human but a dwarf. First time meeting a dwarf brother. The dwarf stated. At the same time, the vice guild master of the Brown Bear Guild informed Crocking that he found a suspicious place where there are elves gathered at the corner of the terrace continent together with one player. He then concludes that the player might be the king of the elves. Crocking was alarmed upon hearing it and he ordered his servant to spread out and put a bounty outside. For every time they assassinate him, reward them with gold, and if you take him alive, I'll give 100 times the bounty, Crocking ordered. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Till next time.